What is going on everybody? It is Aaron Cates and welcome back to the channel. Today we are finishing the lift. We are getting the painted springs, all the painted components. We are getting it all put on the Ford. Hopefully if everything goes right, we will have this truck back on its own weight today. I had to rent a coil spring compressor because I've done some measurements. Our new distance between the coil spring bucket and coil spring tower is about 19 and a half, close to 20 inches. The overall length of the springs is 23 and a half inches. I might be able to get this axle to drop some, but we are gonna have to compress the springs to get them in at least a little bit, I think. But the only thing left we have to do today, I have to drill holes on the passenger side, wire wheel of that side of the frame, get it painted and we'll be all done. Because this driver side, I basically already have done. I did it all off camera. If you guys remember, in the Ford suspension teardown video, I said I was gonna do the driver's side off camera. You guys see this 12 bucket tower is off. This side was a whole, whole lot easier. It came off within just a couple minutes. But we already have our holes drilled. I opted to not weld these on. Like uh, in the teardown video, I said my welder is not rated to weld this thick of steel. And this isn't just like a mud truck or anything like that. I will be driving this down the road. It is going to be tagged, it is going to be insured. I will be driving it down the road. It's not a daily driver, but it will be road legal. And I don't want to have something unsafe on there. So we have some grade eight bolts. We have three of them. We're going to be putting three on each side. Lock washers, lock tight, really torqued down. We don't want to have anything come apart. But we have our coil tower basically already mounted. It's loose because I have to pull it back off. We're going to paint the frame gloss black, get it all back together. And then this is probably going to be the first side that we did a coil spring in because I measured from about an inch above this. You have to remember the coil buckets sit higher up off this. So I measured about an inch above this up to this coil tower. And I want to say it was 19 and a half inches, but we do have the axle and jack stands. So I am able to lower this down just a little bit more. So we might be able to squeeze it in, but we're most likely gonna have to use a coil spring compressor. So I went ahead and rented one. And if you guys missed a last video, please, please go check it out. These springs look amazing. We did this with rattle cans. You know, this looks like powder coat. This doesn't look like something that came out of a can. You, you could get this look out of a spray gun, but not out of a can, and I was able to achieve it. So if you guys wanna do something like this on your vehicle, Please go check out last video. I did all of this for under $50 and we have our coil buckets, our towers, and our springs all painted. And I absolutely, absolutely love the look of these. It looks insane. So what I had to go do is I went to Home Depot this morning. I bought a brand new drill bit set because I didn't wanna have to fight drilling holes through this quarter inch steel. So I went down a brand new drill bit set. I got six half inch bolts, all half inch washers and nuts and we drilled the holes in the other one and already have it mounted on the truck. All the holes are drilled. We utilized two of the factory holes that were there, which is these two holes right here. This is the only hole we had to drill in the frame. So we had to drill these two holes in the tower itself, but they were already in the frame. And if you look, those two holes are these two holes. The only other hole we had to drill was one right here on the other side. Now you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk and you guys wanna see all of this get put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish that side. Okay, so for starters, we're gonna wire wheel the frame. I'm gonna wire wheel from this crease over here back to about right here. We're gonna repaint this whole section right here. But first, we have to wire wheel it and then we're gonna wash it and then let it dry. And then we'll drill our holes and then we'll paint it. This is something that I know for sure It's just something about you I just want more Tell me what you want to do right now Okay, you guys can't tell This is uh, how my life works So you see all the rain all over the truck It hasn't rained in like two weeks The, the day I have to be out here in the driveway and I have to paint outside 
it decides to rain. So now everything is still still pretty wet. I have this side wire wheeled over here. Now that it stopped raining for a second, I am going to go ahead and drill the holes for this. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And hopefully it'll, it'll quit raining long enough for me to get all this done. Okay, so our first hole is gonna go right in the center because where the old coil tower was at, the rivet was dead center on it. I made sure of that in the beginning. And this is the one that we already have drilled. Now, this one was a little offset. I didn't do that on purpose, but it doesn't look terrible. So what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna mimic this one. We are gonna do the same one in the center, and then we're gonna go get the marking for this one, drill this one out. And then what I did with this is I bolted these two in and then drilled this third hole because we're making a hole in the frame. So we want them both to be perfectly lined up. So about a finger, tip away and what I did last time is I since I don't have a punch set guys use whatever works I mean not all of us have all of the right tools in the world but you can make some of the wrong tools do the right thing so we're going to make sure that's dead center and then just just like that okay now that we have a little indention what I like to do is any type of lubricant doesn't have to be seafoam, can be WD-40, can be off-brand, doesn't matter. I like to periodically spray some in that hole. It keeps your drill bits from getting super hot and it keeps them lubed up. And that way you won't burn your drill bits and dull them out a lot faster. And it is raining again, so we're gonna take a break. Okay, well since it won't stop sprinkling, I went ahead and finished this hole out with a half inch drill bit because, I mean, I'll risk my $50 drill from getting wet. I'm not risking this $700 camera. So, I went ahead and finished this hole out. Now let me show you how I mark the hole perfectly using the other hole because you guys know it's not like it's going behind it. So what I do is I take a bolt, I put the bolt through the hole that's already in the tower, I mount it up there and I take some black spray paint on the other side and I spray paint the back of it because the paint's gonna come through this hole right here and it's gonna go on the back of this tower. And then once it's on the back of this tower, we can flip it over and we can drill the hole through the back side. Once we have the hole all the way through, then we can flip it back over and drill through the back that way. This is what I'm talking about with the paint on the back side of it. This is the hole right here. This is paint. There you go. You guys can see it a little better. I know this hole looks black and that looks black. But that's a hole, that's paint. Okay, as you guys can tell, I have our two bolt holes in. We have them as hand tight as I can get. Now we're just gonna eyeball it and drill the hole. There's not another hole in this general area, so we don't have to worry about hitting another hole and having one big hole. So we're just gonna pick a spot, drill a hole and uh, put our bolt in. And then this side will be to, uh, completely together. We'll pull this off, wash it one more time because I'll, I'll be spraying some of this lubricant on there. And we don't want that underneath the paint. So we'll pull this all off, get it repainted, and then put our spring in. All right guys, and just like that, all the holes are drilled. Now you guys noticed the bolts came loose as I was doing this. That's not only because they weren't tightened down, but two, I am going to be putting Loctite on them when I put everything on. So no worries there, it's not gonna be backing out like that. All the vibrations cause just my hand tightening to come loose, but when we have Loctite and they are completely tightened down, not by hand, they will not be coming off. No worries about that. So now we have to clean this frame off. I'll get it primed and painted, and I'll pick you guys up when we're ready to put the springs in. All right, guys, it is the next day. It got way too dark way too fast last night, and it's getting dark now. Thank you to the time change. This 
this was not supposed to be like this um, if I would have had another hour I probably could have filmed a little bit more for you guys but I wasn't able to and I'm sorry I have to do it to you guys again this truck isn't gonna be on its own weight in this video because if you look at the spring I mean first of all let's talk about how freaking good that spring looks but the, the color of it not so much the angle you guys tell how bowed this is it's because our radius arm is completely maxed out so the axle is angled forward therefore causing the spring to go forward but the spring has to be mounted up here so the spring is bending and this is without weight on it there's no jack stand underneath it there's no jack underneath it this is its full droop and it's still got that much tension in it so i've already came up with a way i'm going to drop these radius arm brackets but that won't be until saturday's video hopefully if i can get sheet metal and everything we are going to be building our own brackets because i have the largest brackets that i could find online so we're going to be building some radius arm drop brackets we're actually going to be making pretty much a secondary subframe and what it's going to do is bolt to the pre-existing holes that are in the frame lower the radius arm about five to six inches and allow the radius arm to then bolt into that therefore dropping the radius arm bracket therefore correcting our angle and in the end be able to put the tire on if you guys can tell how low this axle is let's back up a little bit so you guys know there's no tire on this see where that axle is that's a 42 inch tire so the center of that axle should be about 21 inches high that has to go up 21 inches and you guys tell the truck's almost sitting level as it is if that goes up we're gonna be squatting like a good i'm gonna say eight to ten inches so we're gonna have the most tooted up truck on youtube instagram Y'all ever seen a tooted truck on 42s? Cause you're gonna see it. And I apologize, I really I really do apologize guys that we weren't able to finish this in the video because I know I left a cliffhanger in the last video where we painted the springs, the uh, brackets and everything. And I left that cliffhanger of you guys won't get to see it until the next video. And this is the next video. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna drag this on until Saturday. We're just gonna have to end with this and this be a short video. I can't I can't put it back together like that it is not safe that way if I were to put weight on that uh, spring and it didn't bust out eventually it would because it's already bent like this and then you put more weight on it it's gonna bend more like that and then it's either going to break bolt somewhere or it's gonna come out it is not safe that way and I kind of had a feeling it was gonna be like this I was hoping it was gonna be a little bit less and we'd be able to get the spring in and be able to put a tire on i mean technically i could put the tire on just to get a height of it but then i risk breaking something or that spring coming out and doing more damage somewhere else it's not worth it not for the video so like i said guys i'm sorry that we weren't able to do it in this video but it will be in the next video fingers crossed if you guys haven't already go check out the merch i am wearing the jacket because this is the first time in florida it is below 60 outside so we've got our new jacket on with the cat eye on it you guys see the cat eye behind me go check out my website top link in the description support your boy because a lot of money and time goes into all of these things and all of the proceeds from my website go right back into the channel and fund more videos for you guys so go check it out i'm not telling you have to spend any money or anything but at least go check it out look see if you guys like anything and i'll catch you guys in the next one see ya